Hallelujah. We've been studying this past couple weeks, and I think tonight's the third night, or the third uh, Wednesday night, that we've been on this subject of faith, and we will continue to be on this, although I know a couple more weeks, anyhow. Uh, I want to look tonight, uh, as we'll start reading the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. Now, I want to look at a couple things. Uh, faith moves. Uh, Faith is established upon what we hear, but not only that, faith is also it can be established and it continues to or starts to increase in us through the events that take place in our lives. As God begins to prove Himself over and over, as we begin to go through certain trials and certain tests in our life, we find out that God is faithful. He's someone that you can depend on. He's someone you can trust. Amen. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 3, it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For, for, it, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I want to look at verse, 11, uh, verse 6 here just one minute in the book of Hebrews. Here he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now I want you to notice this last part right here. And it says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That must believe that he is God, that he is the creator. And I like to go back to verse 3. That he is the God that framed the worlds by his very word. We must believe that he is. But not only that, notice this last part of this. But we also must believe that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Must believe that He will reward you for seeking Him, for not giving up. And it makes mention, it makes it, you, you think about the passage of the parable where He talks about the woman who was needing bread or the man who was needing bread knocking on the door. That he wouldn't give up. He said, I'm going to knock. He said, I know somebody is in this house and I'm going to continue to knock. It's in the book of Luke chapter 11. And it talks about also the woman who come before the unjust judge. She said she just kept coming. And uh, it gives you the idea that they that seek him, not only that they that seek him, but must believe that he is going to reward you for seeking him. Faith. Faith is a... I want to look at something tonight, a few little things, before I get started deep into this. Because faith over time is, is, is established upon the things that we face in life. And I want to say, share this with you, because you'll never know what God can do until you do what He says to do. There's been a, several months ago, we preached one Sunday morning on this very subject. You will never know what God can do until you do what He says to do. Now, actually a demonstration of faith would be when He says to do something for me to go do that. If the Lord spoke unto me, if we see it in His Word where He has spoken unto us, that when I act upon this, it is an act of faith on my behalf, just simply being obedient to what He says. Faith simply defined is this. This is the most simplest term that we can probably come up with. If we was going to find faith, it is just defined as the word trust. That we come to a place where we begin to trust that person or that individual. So when I begin to put my total faith or my total trust in you, I was thinking this afternoon... It would be to me come here and have a couple men standing here in the front of me turning my back and saying, I'm fixing to follow, you're going to catch me. Well, I would be very timid to do that. And unless I had some big guys, you know, I know that could hold me up and prove themselves. And so when you begin to do this, you begin to have a, if I was to do that, mean I would have a trust in them. I had confidence that they was going to do what I asked them to do. Now, if I didn't have confidence in them, I said, no, I think I just walk around and get down. Do you see where I'm coming from? So trust, the word faith is a, is a trust. It, Webster defines it as this. It is defined as a belief and trust in God. It is also defined as complete trust. 
And the word trust is defined as confidence to do something without fear. Trust. To do something without fear. And it's interesting because he also says that in his word that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And matter of fact, we know that perfect love casts what? Cast out all fear. So when I know what my, I'm depending on, I'm having confidence, and I know that you love me, my faith flow begins to jump or to begins to exceed. It begins to explode knowing, listen, you care about me. Faith. One of the ways a person's confidence is built up is through a series of events. You find this as we begin to look into this a little bit carefully. The more that we, the more you talk to someone, and the more you know that person, and the more that you're around them, and the more that you begin to commune with them, the more you begin to know that person, the more your confidence in them begins to rise. Share a little story with you. Some of you know this, but I make mention of it a lot. And it was one of the things I love to do. I love to play football. I used to. I would now, but I can't even hardly run. But in football, we had come out and we practiced five days a week and sometimes two and three hours a day. And I was the quarterback on the team, and we had several boys that was out there that was wide receivers. Somebody asked me one time, says, why, did, why is it that you only throw to one or two people during the game? Is it, I, it was because during the week, my faith or my confidence in them two had rose to a standard above all the rest. It was not like that I had blind faith that I knew, I knew exactly who could catch the ball and who couldn't. So my confidence in one or two people began to rise up above all the rest of them. What, how did that happen? It happened through a series of events as we began to have practice there in the football field. We would line them up and the quarterback would pull back and drop and he would throw a pass out there to them. Nobody on them. No pressure on them. Ball would hit them in the hands and they would, you know the story, drop it. And so you've soon come to find out that you have a lot of people on the field who claim the position as wide receiver but they couldn't catch. And so our comp my confidence in certain people began to rise up above others because they had proved themselves that they was able to perform the task. Are you with me here? So in practice where we begin to throw the ball, I noticed maybe you thought to some people they didn't never miss it. I mean, there could be people around them, but boy, they always caught the ball. It didn't have to be right on target, just get it close to them, and they could catch it. My confidence in them began to rise up. And when it came game time, that I knew when it come to the crunch who I was going to throw it to because they had proved themselves trustworthy in practice. That if I could get it close to them, they could catch it. I want to tell you that to this afternoon that God wants you to come to a place that you can trust Him. Build your confidence up in Him. And confidence is built sometimes through a series of of events. As a matter of fact, one of the things that God also says in His Word, He says it in the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, that God uses the word here as the prophet is challenging the people there. He says the word prove or, to, or word to test. To test me. In other words, I want you to come to a place now that you begin to try me and see if I am not able to do what I said I could do. He uses this in an area that we call tithes and offerings, where we begin to deal with the heart of who we are. I mean, anytime you deal with a person's pocketbook, boy, you begin to deal with things that are close to their heart. And so he, he, he makes this comment here that he says, try me or prove me. They says, here, it says, we're bringing all the tithes to the storehouse that, you, that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith. Or the word prove means to test me. In other, in other words, the Lord is putting out something here. He's, he's challenging the people. He says, I want you to put me to the test. Try me. Now, the only way you're going to be able to find out if God is able, hey, you're just being obedient to His Word and doing what He says. Remember what I told you earlier? You'll never know what He can do until you do what He says to do. 
Now, I know so many times, boy, when we begin to deal with the issue of money, that all of a sudden now, we put God out of the equation. But I want to tell you, He is the God who is able to multiply, and He is the God who is able to make a way when there seems to be absolutely no way at all. Amen. God said, won't you trust me? Trust Him with every error. Won't you put your faith and confidence in me? See, so many times we sit in places like this and in venues we begin to ask people, do you trust God? And do you believe God? And you know what our, our uh, Christian terminology all of a sudden kicks in and says, oh yeah, we believe God and trust God. And we know how to say all the little phrases and use all the right terminology. But are you activated? Are you demonstrating this in our lives? Trusting Him with every area of of our lives. He's able that not only that it, when he says here, but also that if I sow it shall be given back unto me. In good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God says here, he says, try me. You will never know what I can do until you do what I've asked you to do. You will never know if I can open up the floodgates of heaven until you begin to trust me. It was just like Peter. Peter never would have known if he could have walked on water until he stepped out of the boat. We're talking about just moving from the ordinary into the extraordinary. Stepping into what God has promised for your life. And you will never be able to experience this until you begin to take a step of faith. God is, God is moved by faith when people respond in faith. As a matter of fact, we also understand that the Lord Himself, in His even in His own hometown, could not do many works or many many miracles there because of the people's what unbelief. Let me just stop right here just a second. Let me just share this with you, because sometimes it's your perception of who He is. Your faith will never exceed beyond your expectation of God or how big you perceive Him to be or what you believe Him to be capable of. Yes. How do you perceive Him? Right. Now in Jesus' day, He says here in the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 55 through 58, He makes mention here, and He says He could not even do many mighty works in His own hometown because of the people's unbelief or the people's doubt. The, what the problem was is how they perceived him. It wasn't an argument whether they believed that Jesus exists. They did believe that he exists, but the problem was they only believed him to be the son of Mary. This is the Joseph. This is the carpenter's son. This is the brother of them, the sister. That's all they can look past. I want to tell you, Jesus himself was in the beginning. The Bible makes mention that in the beginning He was there. He is the creator of everything. Understanding who He is. Your confidence and your faith that begin to be built up. Going back to the issue of the tithes and offering as I begin to demonstrate faith. As I begin to have a demonstration of faith is when I begin to reach in to my pockets. And take out what God has commanded of me and begin to bring into the storehouse. And say, Lord, I am believing your word that you're able to do what you said you could do. And when I begin to make this move in my life, I have made an effort. I have made a, a declaration of faith. Every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, you have the opportunity to take a step of faith. To say, God, I believe our trust you. I believe that your word is true. And so in doing so, I am going to move by what I have been told or what I hear. Faith was what? Coming by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You know what happens a little bit by a little bit as you begin to move in one little area of your life and you begin to demonstrate faith? Your faith starts to jump up. I remember back times in my life, you mean sometimes we need to keep a record book. Some people call them a diary. Some of the issues like this, we need to keep up and just keep a record of what God is doing. And it amazes me because I, I have caught myself in this own situation 
just being forgetful. Sometimes our memory is very, very short. I remember years ago as we began to raise our kids, as we began to raise up Hagen and Zach and Daniel, that one of the things that I wanted to instill inside of them was trust and confidence in God. That God is able. And the way that we've done this is by getting by activating the Word of God. If my kids were sick, we would get them, we would bring them up, we would do just as the Bible declared, we would lay our hands on them, we would pray for them, and we would believe God. I remember one night, if I didn't believe that God could do that, I would never have done it. But I believed this, and I wanted my kids to grow up, and I wanted to be able to share the Word of God with them, and I wanted them, their trust and their confidence in them to begin to build up. I noticed over time and over years as time went by that their confidence. I remember one thing very distinctly that we were sitting in the bed one night and uh, I think it might have been Zach who was in the bed with us and we had prayed with him before we went to bed that, that night and he sat straight up in the bed and he says, I mean he was a little bit his other. He says, praise God, I, I, I'm healed. I feel better. My, whatever was bothering me, he said, it's gone now. I said, son, that's the power of God. Now, some people take this very lightly, but I said, over a series of events, faith is established. You know what? That began to tell my son that God is able to heal his headache. You can't expect for God to begin to heal something dramatic in your life if you can't believe Him just to do something small. Am I making any sense here? So I begin to instill in our kids, listen, God is concerned about every little detail of your life. Right. I begin to also make experiences like this. We would, I'm a, some of you know that I am a, a big fisherman. I had not been fishing a long time and I'm getting the fever. And one of the things that we would do is we begin to go fishing. I know you think that this is, this is might be a minute thing for you and say, well, Pastor, I don't know so much about that. What is that? Does that have anything to do with anything? Is God really concerned about you catching fish? Or, I said, I don't know if God is really concerned. I said, I know that God's concerned about us having a good time. And so every, every day that we would start to go fishing, I had Zach up in the truck with me, and we would stop by Hardy's, and even the fellow that went fishing with me, that I started praying. I said, Lord, we would bless the food. I said, Lord, we're going fishing today. I said, I like to fish, but more than that, I like to catch fish. I don't like to go fishing. I like to go catching. And I would begin to specifically pray. I said, Lord, today we want to catch big fish. This is what we want. Lord, we want to come back here with big ones. And I remember, boy, we would hang one on the rod and reel, and I would pull him over the boat. I said, you remember, Zach, what we prayed for this morning? See, you might have thought it was a minute thing. But I was taking it and beginning to teach my son faith. Ask, and you shall receive. Yes. Seek, and you shall find. He says, you have not because you yes. ask not. Some of you probably like me. How many times have we ever went to church service and we, we've heard this faith message time and time again and sometimes I even call myself, man, something's trying to get a hold to me. Some old virus is trying to get attached to me and I come in more. I feel like I'm half dead on Sunday mornings and I preach it, but I ask nobody to pray for me. I want to tell you this. And I will testify. I don't think it's been a time yet that I have come to this altar and called people to come and pray for me that God has not heal me. And I think sometimes, I said, maybe I need to. Why am I so hard-headed sometimes? Why did I wait two or three days? Why did I wait a whole week? Why did, why did when I, this hit me that if I believe in the power of prayer, why was it the first Sunday I just went ahead and called the elders and said, come up here, lay your hands upon me and pray for me according to God's word. Yes. Now when you begin to see faith begins to be and so my faith and my confidence in God has begun to grow and grow and grow over the years. See, I've seen where God has made provision. I've seen where God has healed people that had cancer. I've seen where God has done miraculous things. I've seen where God has been a provider when you didn't see how there was going to be a way that takes place. Some of you that's in here this afternoon, your faith level has exploded in certain areas and nobody can tell you that God cannot do that because you have experienced it. Amen. Right. I think about the great men of, of, of 
of the Bible. Especially the, the, the Old Testament. We'll start there just for a minute. Just for instance, Moses. Moses, man, you look at him, man. This is a great man of faith. Moses' faith is so strong that he comes to the Red Sea. Y'all know the story, don't you? They didn't walk across on muddy ground. They walked across on dry ground. But I want to tell you something. His confidence and trust in God didn't start just there. Moses was a man who was walking in the wilderness one day and he looked over and there was a bush afire. Man, he walked over to it. Man, there the Lord was speaking to him. Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. I'm telling you something, boy, the Lord's beginning to speak to him again to get his attention. I want to tell you that God is becoming very real to Moses. Yeah. Is he not? Uh -huh. Man, who is this? What is going on? Hey, I know I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take this back. Man, listen. And the Lord says, Moses, what do you have? You have a staff in your hand. What's this now? He said, well, throw it on the ground. And he threw the staff on the ground and the staff became a serpent. Oh, man. Put yourself right where Moses is at. He's all of a sudden beginning to experience God in a way that he has never experienced Him before in his life. He has seen now a bush that is burning but is not being consumed. And now he throws a staff on the ground and it turns to a serpent. Hey. And the Lord tells him now, pick it back up. Oh, no. And he reaches and picks it up and it turns back to a staff. Remember what I told you earlier? Events. Events. All of a sudden now, man, God is becoming real to me in a way I have never experienced Him. Yes. His confidence, His trust that the next time He hears the voice of God, He says, I know that you're able. Because I've seen a lot of crazy things happen. Amen. He says, go tell Pharaoh there's about to be some plagues coming. What would give a man? Man, his confidence is being built every time. He goes to him and he begins to tell him a plague is coming. There's going to be frogs and there's going to be locusts and all these other things. Each time, God begins to prove himself. I want to tell you something. But after the 10th plague, Moses' faith little boy is getting on up there. He said, because every time God has told me to do something, I've done it, and boy, it's happened. Do you see where I'm coming from here? Yes. You know what? Give Moses the... Moses' faith to step out where the Red Sea was at didn't start that day. It started back. And when he was in camp by an army of Pharaoh, what are we going to do? I'm telling you, I don't know what was going through Moses' mind, but one of the, probably one of the things that was going through his mind was, I've seen him show up in a bush that was burning and was not consumed. I've seen him take his rod and turn it into a serpent and turn it back to a rod before. I've seen him also tell me there was going to come plague after plague after plague, and it's happened just as he said, and the Lord has told me, he says, take out that staff and go down there and begin to walk out, take your staff and put it in the water. He says, you know what? He has not failed me yet. You will never know what God can do until you do what He says to do. You know the story. You know what happens? The Red Sea parts. They walk across on dry ground. I want to share one more story and we'll close with this. You will never know what He can do until you do what He says to do. We may get back in deeper detail on this subject. This is just something to come to my mind. Some of you know the story where uh, Peter walked on water. Now Peter's been criticized all of his life about the one that sunk and didn't make it. He, you know what I mean? He's been criticized. But I'm going to tell you something. Peter was the only one that could sit around the campfire and tell the other ones, did y'all see me? <laughs> I know y'all laughing at me, but I walked a little bit. Now listen, I want you to you just grab a hold of this. Because God does not ask you to do something crazy and outrageous. God asks you to be obedient. 
All right? So when you look, when Peter was in the boat, he said, Lord, is this you? He said, if it is you, why don't you bid me to come to you? You know what the Lord said? What's this? You know what faith is? Obedience to the Word. You know what the Lord told him? Come. I say this all the time. Don't misunderstand me. Peter did walk on the water. But more than anything, Peter was walking on the Word. A word had been spoken, and all he was doing was being obedient to what had been spoken to him. He just obeyed the voice, the Lord. He, the word had been spoken. And through events that had taken place, see, Peter had seen Jesus heal the blinded eyes. Jesus, Peter had seen him heal the lame man. Peter had been with him when he fed the 5,000. <laughs> If he says do it, just do it. Think, trust, confidence. He says, prove me if I'm not able to open up the windows of heaven. Try me. Just go ahead and try me. He says, I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or ask according to the power that worketh in you. Amen. I want you to stand your feet to this afternoon. Hallelujah. I don't even think I made it through where I was going to go to tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want this tonight before we close. I want to give you the opportunity if you're here and you need prayer in your life. I want to do a couple things. Can we do this? I want to do a couple things. I want you to think to yourself. You may have to go back. You may have to go home. You may have to write this down. You may have to do some thinking. But in the book of Revelation, it says they overcame him, the accuser of the brethren, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Testimonies come through test. And I challenge you, go home, sit down, and write down three to five things that what you think that it couldn't happen and God made it happen. And keep it as a journey. And remind yourself every time you're going through trials and every time you're facing tough situations, go back to it and say, you know what, I've seen you do this. I've seen before he done this. You know what happens? If he'd done it before, he could do it again. Amen? I want to ask a few prayer warriors to come up here, the prayer team. And I want to do something this afternoon. If you're here, any special prayer in some area of your life, maybe you're dealing with some illness, some sickness, and Maybe the doctor has told you you've got certain things in your life and this is just the way it is. This is, this is the way it's going to be. Have you tried God's way? And said, you know what? I'm going to put my trust and my faith in God. I've never let nobody pray for me. I'd be amazed. I'm amazed at how, many, how long we go to church and how many years I've been in church. And, but people have never let nobody pray for me. I want to tell you that God is able. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Miss Jennifer, if you would, can you put me a CD on back there? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of this time. And Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight as we have shared your word. Father, I pray, Lord, that we have delivered it with understanding and with simplicity. God, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing being upon us. And Father, I'm asking you, Lord, tonight for your Lord to move here in the lives of these men and women of these families. Father, there are some here that need doors open in their life. Some are needing a job. Some are needing a, a financial increase. Father, some are needing healing in their bodies. And I ask you, Lord, tonight is they begin to move in the faith that you will be honored. That I know that you are your God that's moved 
by faith. Hallelujah. If you hear this afternoon, there's some men and women here just want to come in agreement with you and just pray for you. If you have this need in your life, whatever it may be, maybe it is a job opportunity, maybe it is a financial increase, maybe it's a financial situation that you're in. Maybe you need a door open in a certain area of your life. I'm going to tell you like Malachi said, try it and see if he's not able. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is an awesome God. Amen. I wanted to make sure that we didn't close this service without giving you the opportunity. Whatever's going on in your life. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we have came come into your house tonight. And Father, you said that faith can by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And Father, I'm asking, Lord, tonight that your word continue, Lord, to stir inside of us. And Father, I'm praying, Lord, over this ministry. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done here so far. I thank you, Lord, for the increase. And God, for the financial stability, Lord, that we're seeing. And the things that are happening, the things that are taking place, Father. I thank you. I ask you, Lord, that your hand be upon us, Lord, as we depart here this afternoon. Yes. That you watch over us and that you protect us. And Lord, the angels are being dispatched into our presence. And Lord, over our kids, Lord, to be a guard over them. Least any evil, least any harm even come near them. Father, we ask these things this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this afternoon. It's great to have y'all out.